looking at them, you can see one of those external jugular veins right here. Um, there's a mandibular salivary gland. It's got a nice oval shape to it. Um, the oral cavity, to get into it, I usually put one edge inside his mouth. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> And then you just push down on it because basically we want to open the oral cavity so that his chin is going to touch his chest. So we got to get that jaw um, opened up. So that. And then. And you should hear something break if you don't keep keep trying. Once. I've gotten that mandible broken. You can use scissors. Let's see. I know. Well, the scissors aren't the best, yeah. too. It's a combination. Now, a lot of times, a student cuts that far, and they're like, okay, that's good. But we can't see some of the stuff that we want to see. Let's try these. They might be sharper. So we're going to keep going. And if you just go down the sides, there's some connective tissue right here. You can cut through that. And that's going to open this up even more. There we go. So now we've got our hard palate, okay, right between the teeth up here. And then the soft palate, the teeth have kind of stopped, so that would be our soft palate. And then there's a hole on the roof of his mouth. That's the opening to the nasopharynx. Okay, the internal nares are on either side, about where that soft palate is. That's your internal nares. And then the tongue, obviously. This little white thing here, that's the epiglottis. So that's what's going to cover his trachea. And then the opening is called the glottis, and that's the opening to the trachea. And then those are the main things to find in here, the internal nares, soft palate, hard palate, the tongue, obviously, um, external nares or his nostrils. We found one mandibular salivary gland, and then the other one is right about there. Sometimes those mandibular salivary glands will get moved and repositioned when they pull the skin off. So it might not look, yours might not look, Exactly like this. Then to do the thoracic cavity, this one has a hole already there. So I usually just kind of use that as a starting point. And then take your scissors and cut down the middle. And when you do that, you can see the blue veins in there. So you want to try and keep your scissors above the veins. And you're going to hit the rib cage about the time you get level with his arms. And so if you put your scissors under the rib cage, now I've got one part of my scissors under the rib cage. You can cut through the ribs no problem with most, most of these scissors. You're going to go all the way down, and so I cut those ribs there, and you can see the sides. And then before I pull too hard, see how some of it's still attached to the veins? So you want to cut above those veins just to sort of separate it from the wall of the thoracic cavity. That way you're not ripping everything as soon as you pull on those ribs. You can do the same. And remember that at the top of the rib cage, you've got the shortest, most round ribs, and so they're, they tend to be the strongest. So I cut up under those. Watch your fingers, because sometimes when you cut them or you start to pull back, it can snap them and they have sharp edges, so you don't want to cut your fingers. Then you come all the way down to about where you feel those ribs stop, and you're going to go over to either side. <laughs> or this <laughs> We're all the way down. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to all that on Wednesday. So, <laughs> and so there's some stuff still attached. You can just kind of cut through that. Most of the time where people have a hard time is where those top ribs are still curved in. So there's one right there. I usually just use my thumb to kind of push down on the veins so I'm not tearing the veins and then just push that rib back. 
and that'll break it so that you can pull the thoracic wall away and see the stuff. See how it still wants to stay attached. You just sneak that a little bit. So now these dark things, those are the lungs, there's the heart. This organ here is the thymus. Okay, so younger minks have a larger thymus. That's where the T lymphocytes develop. You're gonna remove that once you find it because it's kind of sitting between those cranial lobes of the lungs. And so we're gonna have to pull that out in order to find our arteries. Um, you can see that top part of the superior or the cranial vena cava right here. So that's where we see our branches. These are our two external jugular veins. And then there's part of a subclavian vein right there. There's part of, there's part of the other one right there. So there's, they're gonna be the first places where we branch off, and then external jugulars. And then here's an internal jugular vein that's pretty easy to see. And that red one right next to it's a common carotid artery. And then in the center, see if we can uncover our trachea. There's the trachea. So that should be a pretty easy landmark to find. Behind the trachea is the esophagus. So remember we saw that in lecture, how it sits right behind the trachea. There's your other common carotid artery and internal jugular vein. And then if you look closely, there's a little white strand. That's your vagus nerve in that trio on either side of the trachea. And then Hopefully the lungs, the lobes of the lungs shouldn't be too difficult. Remember they're not symmetrical though. You're gonna have more on the right than you will on the left. There's an accessory lobe in minks that you'll have to kind of pull up on the heart and look underneath the heart. So that's the accessory lobe of the lung. And then this little flap of tissue, that's the diaphragm, so that's skeletal muscle, that's the liver there that we'll look at on Wednesday. And then in order to find things like your brachycephalic artery and your subclavian artery, you're gonna to wanna to separate that tissue and just kinda of dig away at that tissue until you see those arteries down there. And I haven't cleaned them off really well, but you can kinda of see them down there. So that's how far down you have to go. And then for your azygos, pull everything over to the left and you're gonna scrape away at the tissue behind the lungs to find the azygos vein on that side. For the aorta, you do the same thing, but now you go over to the right and you scrape away at that tissue to find the aorta right there. Okay, you guys have any questions? That's not everything, but it should at least